We're now on to learning how we can write the detail paragraphs. And this is the final paragraph type in our four step structure for writing a successful task one report. So you're going to learn how to write and structure detail paragraphs for your task one report. So let's take a look at the four step structure once more. We have paraphrased and completed a short introduction paragraph. We've also written our overview, which summarizes two pieces of important information we can see from the visual information, also known as confirming the big picture of the data. So it's now time for us to move on to the detail paragraphs. And the detail paragraphs is where we'll be reporting all the specific key features and visual information from the data. So why are detail paragraphs so important? Well, the detail paragraphs are where you will describe and compare the visual information and data. So let's take a look at this from the perspective of the IELTS examiner. Really at the heart of it, the examiner wants this. Your main goal is to accurately report describe and compare the data and visual information in your given task one question. And the detail paragraphs are where we will give all our understanding of the data and visual information, as well as specific facts and figures. Taking a look at the band descriptors, to paraphrase for a band six, presents some key features and trends from the data. Some of these may not be completely accurate. So for a band six, it's expected that you can report some of the key features and trends, although occasionally it might not be accurate or appropriate. For a band seven, you must clearly present, describe and report the key features whilst making some comparisons. So it's a step up to get that band seven. And we're mostly addressing task achievement and coherence and cohesion. So the detail paragraphs are super important. To better understand the detail paragraph's purpose, let's take a look at the question statement from our task one question. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So our detail paragraphs will be giving all this information about the main features and reporting and making comparisons. It's important to note that the majority of your task one writing will be in the detail paragraphs. It could be as much as 60% of your final word count. In the detail paragraphs, we report the key features or figures of the data and visual information. We need to describe specific figures and data. So it's within the detail paragraph, we give our numbers. Whereas in the overview, we don't give any specific figures. And also we need to keep the detail paragraphs logically organized. Your grouping of the data into group A and group B will really help you do this. Now you may have heard me mentioning key features many times throughout the course so far. So what exactly are key features when it comes to our detail paragraphs? 
Well, in our detailed paragraphs, we only need to describe what is important in the visual information. And what is important is the key features. If we were to describe every single point of data or visual information, our report would be far too long. So, for that reason, we only report on the interesting information or key features we see. And generally speaking, the key features make up start and end points of visual information. For example, the data may start really low, and then at the end, it could be very high against whatever measure we are using. Highest and lowest figures. So it could be, like a previous example, that males are employed much higher than females. In the previous example, we were looking at academic staffing. That is a key feature. It's an interesting part of the visual information. It's also very important that we describe the trends in the data. For example, in a line graph, does the grouping of the data move up or does it drop and go down? This is something we can also report in the detail paragraph. And finally, similarities between groups. To achieve a band 6 and definitely a 7, you must make some comparisons. For example, it may be that two sets of data drop together. Or you may be able to make other comparisons like this. The IELTS examiner will award you extra points for doing this. Okay, we have a good understanding of the how and the why for detailed paragraphs. Now let's take a look at actually creating them, specifically for charts and tables. So when describing charts and tables, we want to report specific numbers and figures. And this all goes within our detail paragraph. So here is a question that we've seen before, and it's taken from a previous IELTS writing test. Now, our grouping for the detail paragraphs is really important. And remember, the grouping comes from our short plan. Group A is detail paragraph one, and group B is detail paragraph two. And there's many different ways we can group data. From looking at this line graph, I can think of two obvious ways to group. The first being we group all the data or the energy types, petrol, coal, gas, nuclear, solar and hydro together. And we simply split the groups by the timeline along the X axes. For example, detailed paragraph one would cover 1980 to 2005. And detailed paragraph two, or group B, would describe and report 2005 to 2030. That being said, there's a lot to compare. So I actually prefer this strategy, this method of grouping for this particular question type. And that is renewable versus non-renewable. So, I'll still be talking about dates, but in detail paragraph one, I will only talk about renewable energy sources. That's nuclear, solar wind, and hydropower. Then, in detail paragraph two, my group B is petrol and oil, coal, and natural gas. And again, I'll be describing these energy sources from 1980 to 2030 but I won't be describing every single trend, just the key features. So let's think about my first group, the renewable energy sources. What key features can you see in this line graph? Pause the video, take a look at nuclear, solar wind and hydropower. Think of two or three key features that you could describe.
What are the major trends? What are the big differences? What are the start and end points? Is there anything interesting to note? Pause the video now and have a quick look before I give you my ideas for key features for my Group A, the renewable energy sources. Okay, so I'm sure you've got a few good ideas, but here is what I have noted. Four key features that I'll describe in my first detailed paragraph, and that is all renewable energy start at the same consumption amount, about four quadrillion units. So they all start together. That's quite interesting, a key feature. Next, I noticed that nuclear power is really the only energy source to make gains from 1980 to 2005. From 2005 to 2025, nuclear stays the same. Solar increases and hydro drops slightly. And then at the end, by 2030, nuclear is the highest at around 10 quadrillion units. And then it is followed by solar and hydro power underneath. Quite simply, there are four features I'll describe. Of course, we're going to look a lot more into vocabulary and grammatical structures. But for now, just think of the basic information of describing key features, as that's the important thing about writing our detailed paragraphs for any task one question. So let's take a look at how this detailed paragraph might look. Here are my key features. And here is my full detail paragraph. Let's read through this now. To begin with, all renewable energies start in 1980 with around 5 quadrillion units of consumption. That's my first key feature finished. On to key feature two. From 1980 to 2005, only nuclear shows a slight increase to around 8 quadrillion units, whereas solar and hydropower fluctuate at around the same level, 4 to 5 units. So that's key feature 2 complete. Let's move on. From around 2012, all renewable energies plateau until 2026. And finally, by 2030, nuclear is the most consumed renewable energy at around 10 quadrillion units, followed by solar and hydropower respectively. So there we have it, four key features that I've described for my detail paragraph A, which is the renewable energies. Again, we'll be looking a lot more at specific vocabulary you can use. But taking a look at this paragraph, in blue, I have my grouping types. In orange, I have key features. And you'll also notice there's one red, whereas, a great piece of vocabulary to compare different things. So, at its heart, for charts and tables, we describe the facts and figures from the visual information. But this is slightly different for maps and process diagrams. So let's move on. So the writing strategy for detailed paragraphs in maps and process diagrams is slightly different to that of charts, graphs and tables. We usually group the visual information by splitting the map either vertically or horizontally, or by cutting the stages or grouping the stages for a process diagram. Not sure what I mean? Well, I will show you now with a map. So here is a standard map that you might see in IELTS Task 1. What I often suggest doing is halving the maps, either north to south or east to west. 
In this example, I've grouped by east and west. So I will only describe in detail paragraph A, everything on the west of the map, everything to the left of the red line. My detail paragraph two or group B is everything on the east of the map or everything right of the line. I will make comparisons to what has changed on the island. And I'll show you some examples of detail paragraphs for maps in a moment. Now for process diagrams, we simply group or split the different stages. So here is a process diagram for how bricks are made, beginning with a digger and ending with the delivery of bricks. Simply put, for the process diagram, count how many stages and then split them into two groups. So at the top, I have one, two, three, four stages. The digger, the metal grid and roller, adding sand and water, and then making the bricks from the wire cutter or mold. And then group B would be everything underneath that, from the ovens to the packaging to the delivery. So our grouping's quite different for maps and processes, but it's fairly easy to do too. So let's take a look at a map. Here we have a standard IELTS writing task one map where we have two different years and we can see some development. Simply put, the detailed paragraphs will describe what has changed and what has remained the same. I'm going to group this map by everything in the north and everything in the south and make comparisons between the two dates. So, key question, what remains the same and what has changed? Well, I can see at the very start the mainland has pretty much not changed at all. I can see that a new bridge has been built which connects the island to the mainland. So that's something I can describe. There's also a tour boat that has been added and I assume a port must have been added too. And also the houses remain unchanged. They don't change in terms of the buildings. However, there is a road added to the north going out of the houses. So that's something that I can report on. So let's take a look at my detailed paragraph for this map question. To begin with, we can see the facilities on the mainland remain the same between 1995 to 2005. However, a new bridge was built to connect the island and the mainland between the two years. Furthermore, a tour boat port was added just northwest of the new bridge. The housing on the island north of the new port remained unchanged, although a road leading north was added. Once again, in blue, we have the grouping. In orange, the key features. Now, some of you may be saying it doesn't mention anything about a port. Now, sometimes we can assume features are added. There must be a port as there is a tour boat. How else would people board it? But be careful not to add facilities that definitely wouldn't exist. So there you have it. I've reported four key features in detail paragraph A, everything south of the island. Detail paragraph B would be everything in the north of the island and comparing 1995 to 2005. Let's now move on to a process question type. And here we have the same process diagram we looked at previously. And it shows us how bricks are produced. It's also worth saying that even though process diagrams are slightly less common for IELTS writing task one, it's still good to have an understanding just to be best prepared. Okay, so I will split my data in very much the same way. 
And the big question to ask for process diagrams is what happens in each stage. Simply describe what you can see in each stage of the process diagram. So first, the digger digs clay. Then stage two, the clay is mounted to a metal grid and roller. After that, sand and water is added to the clay mix. Then the mixture is passed through either a mould or a wire cutter, which creates unhardened or uh, soft bricks that are ready for the oven. I'm no expert at how bricks are produced. I'm simply uh, explaining and describing what I can see in each stage. So let's take a look at detail paragraph A for this brick process question. In the first stage of brick production, clay must be dug up by a digger. This raw clay is then passed onto a metal grid where the clay passes through onto a roller. Then sand and water is added to the clay, creating a mixture suitable for bricks. After that, the clay, sand and water mixture is passed through a wire cutter or added into a mold to produce unhardened brick shapes. So there you have it, the four stages which creates my detailed paragraph for a process diagram. And once again, we'll be looking more specifically at vocabulary. Just understand our detailed paragraphs for a process diagram describes the key features of each stage in the visual information. So there you have it, how to write detailed paragraphs for a task one report. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you some modelled live writing for detailed paragraphs for different Task 1 reports. See you there.